that's the indication of me being uh, need, need a break, right? So, so I'm glad the fall break is coming. So uh, do you need a break? Focus on chapter six, seven, and nine. So anything you need to focus on, you need to focus on chapter six, seven, nine. Uh, so, okay. So, so we are not going to cover all the, uh, all the, all the uh, learning objectives. So the focus is on the uh, first two, okay? We want to talk about the target cost and total cost plus pricing, this two uh, approach. That's our focus of chapter nine. And uh, I'm going to talk about number five, okay? Because this is uh, connected to the uh, ABC, activity-based costing, mm, but I will not test on this, okay? So I will teach you about objective five, learning objective five, but I will not test you on this, okay? Um, I feel that this is a good uh, connection to the, to the knowledge you have learned in uh, ABC, okay? Uh, so we are talking about target costing, okay? So the idea is what, what, what is the amount of the cost we are targeting, at, right? We want to keep the cost under control, right? There, we set up a target costing. Uh, so we start with price, okay? We start with price. So many factors affect the price. Uh, demand, right? Demand. Can you imagine if I'm the only... Uh, I, I'm, if I'm the only accounting professor all over Canada, right? I think that everyone will come to me, right? Oh, Mr. Liu, can you please come to teach in our university, right? So if I'm the only accounting professor and I will be in a great demand, right? And how much do you think they're gonna offer me to teach accounting courses, right? <laughs> it's gonna be a lot, right? So, um, you know, uh, so basically, demand will affect the price, right? We know that. Uh, cost the considerations, right? Um, you know, you do not want to charge under, you do not want to charge a price that you can't even recover your cost, right? So the cost, the cost always from a baseline, right? And you want to add a little bit of margin on top of the cost, right? That would be your price. Um, and also political reactions, right? Political reactions. Um, so environment, okay, environment. So um, I remember, um, you know, once when the, uh, the gas price went up very high and then all of a sudden many people start uh, happy, right? People will protest. Uh, they invite people to uh, stop using car for a day, right? Just to uh, kind of cut off a little bit of the demand to uh, force the suppliers to reduce reduce the gas price, right? So there are definitely political reactions uh, to certain to prices, right? Uh, and the last one is the pricing objectives. The pricing of objectives. Uh, sometimes, if I'm um, if I try to uh, you know um, I try to occupy more market share, I want to use a strategy, right? Maybe I will offer low uh, price, right? Try to obtain all these clients, right? So that would also affect your price. So you can see that pricing decision can be affected by many factors, right? Um, you, at the minimum, you wish to cover all the cost and also earn a little bit of profit, right? That's your minimum goal. Um, so in order to be able to uh, set up a appropriate price, the company has to understand the market forces and also the cost and of the product and the service, right? So you have to know about yourself, how much it's gonna cost me to produce this, right? That's the cost, cost side. You also want to know about others, right? What is on the market, right? What is the selling price? Um, you know, what is the price uh, de determined by the demand by the market? So, um, so traditionally, okay, how we set up the price, uh, we know, we figured out what's the cost, okay? And then we add a profit margin, okay? And then that's my price, okay? So suppose I'm trying to make a product, the cost is $100 
and I want to earn, let's say, uh, twenty dollars more, right? I want to earn twenty dollars. So the twenty dollars will be my profit margin, right? So one hundred is the cost plus twenty dollars profit margin. So I'm going to set up the price as one twenty, right? That's how traditionally we set up the price. Uh, but if the market is very competitive, right? So you have no power to set up the price, okay? Uh, because in the economics uh, 1000 or 1010, you learn about the basic economics, right? You learn about this, uh, this point, right? When the, this two uh, line, supply line and demand line, right? Uh, they cross, what is called? Does anyone remember this point? What this point is called? Equilibrium point. Very good, very good. Uh, that's, that's the equilibrium, right? So the idea is uh, when there is, when the supply in the market is going up, okay? So that's this direction, right? Supply go up. Um, so uh, the demand goes down, okay? The demand goes down. And eventually there is a point that uh, when they're equal, that's the price, right? That's the price set up. So that's from the economic, when the market is highly uh, competitive, right? Um, so this is pretty straightforward, right? Do you, is there anything I need to, do I have to explain this a little bit more about this, uh, the, the things you have learned in the eco economics? So basically think about Walmart, right? <laughs> That's the strategy uh, Walmart is using. That's the power of the market, the force of the market, right? So remember you go to Walmart, right? What's their slogan, right? What's the slogan for the market? What's their strategy in the market for Walmart? Great prices. Yeah, so they can help you save money, right? The cost is low, right? How can they keep the cost low, the price low? So uh, when they negotiate with the suppliers, okay? So they, they ask all the suppliers to come to the same room and they ask them to bid for the price, okay? So if I need a, a, a shoe supplier, okay? I have all these 20 shoe suppliers in the room. Okay, tell me how much, how much you want to sell to Walmart, right? So because of the market, right, it's competitive, uh, Walmart was, is able to be very successful, right? in terms of uh, keep, the, <laughs> keep that uh, cost very, very low, okay? So that's what happened, right? That's what happened. Everyone wants to use Walmart, right? Because this is one of the largest retailer, right? So therefore, um, you know, Walmart has that power, right? To keep, because the competition is among all the suppliers, keep the price low, right? So what's the target cost, right? So you have no say, right? The suppliers cannot set up the price, how much they want to sell to Walmart, right? Because if you ask for a higher price, Walmart will not go with you, right? Walmart will pick always the lowest supplier, right? So, so the supplier has no say uh, about the, the selling price, right? So the selling price is it's determined by the market, right? So, uh, basically, then we figured out what's how much profit we want to know, right? I know the selling price, right? It's set up by the market, and uh, I want to know what how much money I want to earn. Okay, so the price minus the desired profit, that's the target cost, right? Suppose we know that the price in the market is two dollars, okay, for this product. This is the market price, right? So uh, and then I wish to earn fifty cents. So my target cost would be $2 minus 50 cents. So $1.50, that's my target cost, right? I don't, want, um, my, I don't want to make a product at a cost higher than $1.50, right? Because that's my target cost in order to obtain 50 cents uh, profit margin, right? So why com compare this uh, target costing versus other costing? Okay, for target costing, uh, my target cost is the difference between the market price minus the desired profit. The traditional way of setting price is we know the cost and we add the profit margin. That's my price, okay? So under these two different methods, uh, under target costing, firm becomes a 
price taker, you have to take it, right? The suppliers, you will have to take the price, right? Set by Walmart, okay? Um, but for the traditional ones, the firm is the price maker. They will decide what the price they, they want to sell their product. Okay, so basically uh, the, uh, sorry, give me a second, what happened? So price is set by the market, not by the firm for target costing. And the price is set by the firm and not market for the uh, other costing method. So you can see that this cost is the difference between these two numbers. Therefore we say the cost is residual after the price and the profit margin, okay? Uh, here, under this other costing method, price is the residual, right? So you, you will set up the cost and then you add profit margin, you get your price. Okay, you see the difference? So the key uh, under the target costing is your cost control, right? You have to be able to con control your cost to make it under your target cost. That's the key to the success of the business, right? Um, okay. Okay, so um, the company, okay, the price taker, um, they want to be in the market, they just have to live with it. So they, they will take the price, okay? And that price is set up by the market due to the supply and the demand force, okay? And uh, so basically, if your market is no different from other, if your products is no different from others, the market will set the price, okay? So the examples are farm products, right? So your milk is no different from, uh, from the milk produced by the, your neighboring farm, right? It's milk. Uh, there's no difference, right? In terms of the, the, the product. So um, you can't set up the price. Right? And this price will be determined by the market, okay? So, um, that's the example. And uh, a company um, can, can be, okay, uh, a price, uh, a price uh, setter, okay? So they can set up a price if their product is especially made, okay, customized. And uh, no other, nowhere else you can find the same product, okay? Your pr company's product is differentiable from the other products. Okay, so the example would be copyright and uh, work, work of art, right? So think about Adobe, right? So that would be the uh, patent, right? And I trust that many of you are using the softwares, right? Um, by Adobe, okay? So there's no other, no other, other digital product is comparable to Adobe, right? You know, so the way how this design, uh, the interface, right? for different softwares, the videos, um, all these uh, different, um, you know, softwares, right? So um, so that's a special product, right? And uh, you, you can't find similar products elsewhere, right? Um, so therefore, therefore, Adobe has the power to set up the price, right? The way they want, okay? And also some artwork, right? Did you see my art? Did you see this one? Do you recognize this, this this lady? Mona Lisa. Yeah. Okay. So I I uh, I draw this picture when I was fourteen years old. Okay. <laughs> I never why I I would never saw that one day I'm gonna show to uh, many Canadians. Okay. <laughs> when I was in China, uh, so in nineteen ninety four December, um, I draw this picture. Okay. So um, how much you want to pay for this? I will take a cash, I will take a bid. You can't find it anywhere else, right? <laughs> I'm just joking. Um, so it has to be good artwork, right? Has to be good artwork. Uh, the famous artists, right? If they uh, produce an artwork, right? So uh, then you can get the same, the, the, the same kind of product elsewhere, right? Only this artist can make this artwork, right? Um, so uh, in that sense, right, in that sense, the artist is able to set up a price. But that's not true, actually. That's not true. Um, 
you know what's the funny thing about artist? Oh, Hussein wants to, to pay me $1 million. Wow, thank you. That's very generous. <laughs> okay. Um, so, uh, you know what's, what's interesting about artists is normally they cannot live rich, right? So if they're alive, normally their work doesn't, doesn't worth that much. Do you know why? When they are still alive, normally their artwork doesn't worth as too much money. Only when they die, and then their <laughs> the art the artwork they liked worth a lot of money. Do you know why? Because it's not gonna happen again. Like the that piece of art, like I don't. They're not gonna do it. The yeah. Same. Yeah. Exactly. Richu. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing, that there's yeah. no more art that's going to be produced by yeah. that artist anymore. Yeah. So all of a sudden, they've become limited in their availability. Yeah. So they're they're scarce. Yeah, exactly, right? So the demand, the demand is always there, but the supply is zero, right? This is the only one. There's no more supply because no other artist will, will be uh, doing, you know, this 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 type of work probably the style right and uh, and that's the only one left right that's why this uh, paintings the art worth millions of dollars right um, only after they die right if they're still alive then every year they will make one or make two right so you know the, the supply is there right so it's sad right so that's why many people was joking like they never want to be artists because you know they can't make money when they are alive. <laughs> Uh, okay, so you got the idea, right? If your product is unique, right? It's differentiable from other competitors, right? Uh, you are able to set up the price, right? Because they can't get this, the same product elsewhere. You are the only one can offer this, right? Can you get iPhone from elsewhere other than Apple? You can't, right? So, so of course, that's why Apple charge you a lot of money on even the cable, right? On, airport right on everything they try to use different type of cable right and <laughs> try to sell you for the whole money and then you have to buy it right you have to buy it yeah. okay so um, there are four steps right the first steps is you want to decide uh, where is your market niche right so I'm if I'm a car manufacturing, so I'm I'm am I competing in the luxury um, end or in the eco economic end, right? Um, so every business owners has to decide, right? Every business owners has to decide um, a strategy like this, right? For example, uh, you know I have accounting practice, right? So the question I have to ask myself: What kind of customers am I serving, right? I might only go for those customers with high net worth, right? So I go with, you know, larger profit margin, but low volume, right? Or um, I'm going with everyone, right? Like students or maybe uh, people who, you know, make like average wage, right? Um, in that case, I don't make a lot of money because the market is very competitive, uh, but maybe I will go by volume, right? I will go by volume. So you, you see that you, it's always, when, whenever you are um, you know, having business, right? You have to think about which market you want to compete, right? Uh, the second one is, the second step is for that kind of um, audience, right? You are targeting, right? Your client, okay? And you do some research, right? You do some research, marketing research. And then you would figure out what would be the price that, you know, um, what would be the, uh, you know, the, the kind of the price, right? This target uh, group of people, they are able to handle, right? So if I file tax returns for students, how much you are willing to pay? So I'm asking you now, uh, if, if you, how much you are willing to pay me to file your tax return? I file my own taxes. See? See, you, you want to pay nothing, right? Because you can do it by yourself, okay? So um, 
you know, that's right away, all of a sudden, you know that you can't you can charge a lot of money, right? For this target audience, right? Um, zero, Nima says zero too. Okay, so, <laughs> so um, I'm, I'm glad that means you are highly competent. Okay, <laughs> you can file your own tax return. Um, so, um, but if you think about other, uh, you know, if they are the, they are the people, uh, if they are the CEOs, right? They have lots of investment, right? Uh, they probably buy stock shares in the market. Uh, they, they are invested in real estate, right? Um, and uh, they have all kinds of maybe uh, schemes try to avoid the tax, right? So, but they cannot figure all of this by themselves, right? Um, and they probably don't have the time to do it. And um, at that level, right? the tax issues can be quite complicated, right? So then they have to pay good money to hire a CPA to do it, right? So you can see that depending on your audience clients, um, you would set up your price accordingly, right? So, okay. And then uh, you want to figure out what's your target cost, right? So suppose uh, I know I can charge um, this working class, right? In the middle class working couples uh, for let's say $300 for the, for, the, for the family's tax return, right? So, and what's my desired profit? Okay, what's my desired profit? And that's the market price, 300. What's my desired profit? I wish to make $100, right? So uh, I had to target my cost to be under 200, right? So that'll be including my software cost, right? And also my labor cost. I had to be able to do this tax return very quick, right? Like in 10, 20 minutes, half an hour. I can't use like five hours to, to work on this. Then I can't make any money, right? So um, like how much, how much, you know, how much value I believe from my one hour, right? So even uh, accounting students, if they hire a tutor, they probably pay $60 per hour, right? And then you consider uh, as a CPA professional and as a professor, how much I should charge per hour, right? I, I probably make on average $200 per hour uh, for teaching this course, right? Um, so, um, you know, what, if I, for my client, right? Tax client, how much I should charge them, right? So those are the things, you know, help me make decision. Right. Certain clients, I, ha I can't take them, right? Certain clients, I just cannot take them because it doesn't, I can't ask for the price that is acceptable for them and also, um, you know, cover my cost, right? Um, so the number four is once you know your target cost and you know your uh, product niche, you just have to hire people to come up to the valuable product uh, that uh, will be have you know that competitive quality uh, specifications, and at the same time you, you have to always keep in mind your cost should not exceed the target cost. Right? Does this make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Somebody broke the the cup. Ruben, did you did you broke your cup? <laughs> Sounds no, like sorry, I just dropped something. <laughs> okay, yeah. Okay. Oh, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so that's the target costing. Um, this is pretty straightforward, right? Nothing really uh, too hard to understand, right? If you are fine with target costing, let's go to the uh, total cost plus pricing. Total cost. Uh, total cost plus pricing. Okay, so what I just talked about it is there is a competitive market, right? You cannot set, set up your price. So now suppose we are talking about this, a different scenario when there is no or little uh, competition, right? So, so then the strategy would be um, the cost, right? You want to know your product cost and then you want to know what's your targeted return, okay? First step, you want to figure out what's your cost, right? This is, that's why you are in 2400. You are learning how to figure out the product cost, right? And, uh, and then you want to add up 
like a markup, right? So depending on your ROI, return on investment, you can figure out what's that would be the, the margin, right? And uh, when you add them together, okay, when you add them together, that is your target selling price. That's your target selling price, right? So this is pretty straightforward, right? Okay. <clears throat> uh, so this is one example. Uh, so I have the information here and also at the uh, right lower corner, there is another uh, table capturing the main information here. So this is ABC manufacturers video cameras, uh, camera pens with budget sales volume of tens of units has the following that cost data. So the wearable cost per unit, so it's given that's $60. So my lower table also captures this information, okay? So that's the variable cost per unit. Okay, for the fixed cost, okay? Uh, the total cost is 280,000. That's the fixed manufacturing overhead. And 240,000 for the fixed selling and the main expenses. That's my fixed cost. And the volume of the production in the budget is 10,000. So I, I'm able to figure out the fixed or manufacturing overhead is $28 per unit and the $24 per unit for the fixed selling and the main expenses. So together, my fixed cost per unit is $52. And I also recorded here um, the green in the green color, fixed cost is 52, okay? So um, if ABC had set a target return on its investment of 1 million, a uh, 20%. So the company invested $1 million, they want to get a return of 20%. Okay, that means how much money they want to make? 20% on 1 million. How much money do you want to make? 200,000. 200,000, right? So 200,000, uh, so for the volume, the volume is 10,000 units. So for each unit, 200,000 divided by 10,000 units. So for each unit, the, the markup, right? I need to add additional $20, right? Okay, so now you can see the lower table here, uh, variable plus fix, my total is 112, and the $20 is how much I want to make. So my selling price should be? $132. Okay, Ruben? Yeah, I agree with that. Okay, good. 132, okay, 132. So is this very challenging or is pretty straightforward? Straightforward. <laughs> yeah, okay, good. So you know, first you know your cost, right? You know your cost, all this cost variable fixed per unit. And then you figure out how much desired return on investment per unit. You add them all, that's your target selling price. So what's the advantage? The advantage is easy to calculate, right? It's very easy to calculate. What's the disadvantage? What is the disadvantage? Anyone? This is a tough question. What's the disadvantage using this approach? Rylan? No. Uh, Dan? Uh, it doesn't factor in the market and the market costs. Okay, very good. Aaron? Um, from my other classes, you have to, for the price, you have to consider the customer if they are willing to pay for the price at a certain value. Okay. So, yeah. yeah, James. Yeah, I was I was just about to say the same thing. <clears throat> okay. Um, if the customer will even pay that price. Okay, Rylan. Um, yeah. So sales volume plays a large role, and the lower the sales sales volume, the higher the price. Okay, the volume, right? The sales volume. Okay, that's a very good point. Uh, Isabella. Could it be like how much the price would have to increase based on like how much like your distributors and stuff would have to charge? So like when it gets at the end where the retail is? Okay. 
um, so you are saying uh, uh, the retailer. So you are saying the price we are now we are having is the uh, whole like uh, the wholesale price, and then the retailer will set up additional price. Okay. Yeah, so that okay. they cover like their own costs. Okay. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, but I, I guess right now we are not talking about the retailer. We are talking about the manufacturer. Um, yeah, but that's okay. a good point. Yeah, Tammy. Um, it does not uh, factor in demand for demand. Um, okay. yeah, and because of that, the volume because they the more volume produced, the more they're able to like save cost. So if it's not highly demanded, they are not able to, after all, get what they want to get because it's going to be high price. Yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah. So here, doesn't does not consider the demand side, just as some of the students was common, right? Does not consider demand side. Um, fair question to ask: Will the customer pay the price? Okay. Um, fixed cost per unit changes with the change in volume, right? Uh, if your volume decreases, so the fixed cost per unit will increase, right? All of a sudden, your cost will increase, right? And then your selling price will increase, right? So, do you think your customer will be happy? Okay. Um, often, it's because your customer already not happy. Therefore, you have a decrease in the volume of sales, right? So. Um, so at a lower sales volume, company must charge a higher price to meet a desired ROI, right? Okay, so let's take a look at the same example, but now let's change the volume, okay? Let's change the volume. So the volume was 10,000. What if it's 8,000, right? What if it's 8,000? Let's see how these numbers will change, okay? Um, Okay, so the variable cost is still 60. Um, so the fixed cost increased from 55 to, to what? So 55 for 10,000 units. Now it's 8,000. Okay, so uh, Erin and the, the, Isabella, Isabella you, you have answered the question. So I want to call somebody who haven't answered a question. So the fixed cost per unit was 52 for 10,000 units. How much is gonna be if the unit cost, unit fixed cost for 8,000 units? Uh, Janaya? Uh, $65. 65? Yeah. Oh, 65. How did you do it? We're talking about the fixed costs, right? Yeah, per unit. Yeah. Because uh, we're using the same total cost numbers, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, shouldn't that be the 280,000 divided by the 8,000? Mm hmm. And the 240,000 divided by the 8,000, so that yes. is $35 and $30 respectively, equaling 65. Yeah, very good. Yeah, thank you. Uh, you can also use uh, 52 times 10,000 divided by 8,000, right? So the answer here is, Jania is correct, is 65. So the variable is 60, but you can notice, right? Because volume dropped, your unit fixed cost went up from 52 to 65, right? And now the total cost now is already 125. Um, so we still want to make $200,000 on 8,000 units. So each unit, I need to add $25, right? So I need another 25. So I had to, my target selling price now is $150. It was 132, right? So if I'm able to sell 1,000, uh, 10,000 units, uh, in order to make $200,000, I can target my selling price as 132. However, if the vo sales volume drop to 8,000 to earn the same $200,000, I have to target my selling price as 150, right? So volume drop, your target selling price is higher in order to make the same amount of profit, okay? 
Do we have any questions on this example? I have a question. Go ahead, yeah. Uh, so is a similar question like this, what we would see like on the midterm, trying to set up this question to get the selling price per unit? That would be a very reasonable question to test. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Anybody else? Okay, so um, I just want to ask one question. How many of you have already achieved at least a 10 participant mark? Please give me a sum up. If you have already achieved 10 or more than 10 in participation, I just want to take a look. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so eight of you have already uh, done that. So good job. So you don't have to send, if you are sure you have meet the pen, you don't have to send me any uh, emails anymore because you know, it doesn't help you, right? If you get more than 10, it does, it's, it's the same as 10, right? Okay. Uh, for those of you who are close, make sure you participate, right? Make sure you participate. Ashley? Um, I just have a quick question. So like if I do my bonus mark, uh, like my bonus mark this weekend or whatever and get the two points that it goes and then can that count towards my 10 marks in class as well? Oh, no, these, these two are separate. So the bonus question versus the participation, they are, they are separate, separate things. So they are evaluated on independently. So for the uh, bonus questions, there are going to be six bonus questions. Each bonus questions, you would get uh, maximum 1% to your, final, to your final grade. And for the participation, uh, you have to earn 10 in order to get a 6%. If you don't earn 10, you get 0%. That's how this uh, evaluated. So we do not evaluate them together. It's, they are separate things. Oh, okay, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Anybody else have a question? Uh, let me. Yes, Professor. So I was wondering if you've already done like your 10, do you, would you rather we give the opportunity for others to participate? Instead yeah. Of yeah. So, um, you know, I don't want anyone to have excuse, right? Sometimes mm -hmm. it's interesting. If you think about the social psychology, yes, sir. Um, people tend to blame if there is the failure, right? He, people tend to blame others for the failure. Mm -hmm. If there's a success, people tend to attribute that success to their own, <laughs> their own ability, their own, right? Yeah, so, true. But that's just the human psychology, right? So I know that well enough. So uh, for some students, if they don't have, they, don't, they didn't get the participation, often they will say, you know, oh, we just have that 10 or 15 students always wants to talk, talk right? <laughs> Uh, so they take up the time, right? Um, so, so I want to remove that excuse, right? So first of all, if anyone has answered answer question in the class, I will stop them to give the chance for others to ask, right? Okay. To, to answer. Second of all, right now, in the, this is in the middle, right? Mm -hmm. For those students who have already got a participant mark, mark, you yeah. can stop contributing <laughs> if I, and give them the chance, right? Okay. 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 There, are there, are, there are still enough uh, lectures, I believe. Okay, if yes. anyone wants to, because this talking people now, they will stop talking. So now it's your opportunity. If you still don't, don't talk, then don't blame on others, right? It's just you, right? So um, I want to be super fair. So I will give enough opportunity for anyone who wants to participate. But if they decide not to participate, right? Let's be fair. And then you can just kick in, right? You know, if you have the answer, you can give, give them enough, you know, time. If they don't, mm -hmm. nobody answer the question, nobody raise the hand, then feel free to raise the hand, right? So, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So you can still participate, but just make sure we are trying to leave in the priority to those who haven't participated. 
who have it. Okay, sir. Mm-hmm. Okay, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So I'm wondering uh, if in the end, at the end of the semester, if you get a, like an A or A plus, would you say you are smart? You you work very hard. You earn the grade. Or you will say I have a good instructor. <laughs> Is, is that you or your, the environment <laughs> for your success? Okay. And then if you didn't pass the course, okay, you get a poor grade. Would you say I didn't do enough work? You know, I just didn't put enough effort. Or you would blame on me. You know, I have a very bad instructor. I'm very curious about that. Just to test on that theory, social psychology theory. You know, it's interesting. Uh, in, the tr- in the business world, okay, the true success leader, okay, we talk about leadership, right? It's a big, big word today. In the business world, the true successful leaders, they are the opposite, right? They give credit to their uh, coworkers, to their employees, right? The, the, for the success. And they take and they bear the, the, uh, the failure on their own. If something didn't went well, they would say, you know, I'm the leader. It's it's my fault. Okay. They want to blame on, you know, their subordinates, right? But if they are success, they would give that credit to their uh, coworkers. So that's how the true successful leaders work in the real world, world, right? So I think you guys are adults, right? Just uh, learn to be grew up. And, if, and know that every decision you make, you do have a consequence. And try to think about how can I do better, right? And instead of blaming on other people, right? You think about it, how can I make this better, right? Maybe there are some environmental factors, right? Maybe COVID or whatever other things, you know, put you under pressure, under stress, right? And if you can't change that, right? Then what are you gonna do with it, right? If you don't like me, right? What are you gonna do with that, right? I will be still the instructor here, right? Blah, 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 right? If you don't like me, <laughs> I will be still the one, right? Um, otherwise you probably want to change to move to another section, change the instructor, right? Um, if you can't change that environmental factor, right? Maybe you want to change yourself, right? Maybe you should start spend more time to work hard, right? To improve that, right? So yeah, I guess, you know, you know, Environment, environmental factors is not always uh, friendly. That's true. That's the real world. Let's learn, right? Let's be, let's facing the real world and try to think about yourself. How can you do better, right? How can you change the result? Okay. Boy, I don't know why I went that far. <laughs> okay. okay. Does anyone have any question? I, have, I see some hands up. Uh, okay. Give me a second. Uh, Shudong. Uh, I just uh, want to ask for the bonus work uh, in really pass. So should we get all one hundred percent for each one, and when we will get one percent for participation? Oh, you can do both. So you do both, right? It's open. Uh, both both area are open to everyone, right? The more you do, you are more likely to get more marks, right? It's it's really oh. about. Uh, you know, how you evaluate the benefit and the cost, right? Yeah, if you want to earn that 1%, you have to put enough effort to get the work the assignment done, right? The bonus work done and uh, do it correctly, right? Because otherwise you won't get the maximum 101%, right? If you get 90%, mm-hmm. you only get 0.9% added to, two, right? Um, so yeah, so you, you have to evaluate the, the amount of time, the cost and the benefit, right? But it's open oh. to both, so people, can possibly get a 12% from both, right? So 6% from participation and 6% from the uh, uh, bonus work. So that's the maximum a person can get, 12%. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Ashley? Uh, I think I forgot to lower my okay. hand. Okay, sure, Sorry. yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, if you have no other, no other uh, question, I will move on. Okay, so let's take a look at this. Uh, when a company is attempting to increase return on investment, it should work to
Okay, so let's see. Uh, Kate. Um, I, I think it's D. D, a decreasing uh, operating D. asset. Yeah. Okay. Uh, long. I think it's D as well. Yeah. Okay, Jimmy. Yeah, I would say D too. Okay. Uh, by the way, I really appreciate you uh, spend the time uh, sending me the timestamps for the chapter seven videos. Thank oh, you so much. Yeah. You're very welcome. Yeah, because it's much easier for the students to uh, go back to review the topics, right? Because they can just went to that time uh, stamp right away, right? So that's really awesome. Thank yeah, you. I find it easier too, no problem. Yeah. And uh, Santiago? Uh, I think it's D. D, okay. So I see, yeah, that's D. Okay, this one. Okay, question on this one. Professor, I, I have a question with regards to that um, review that you just did now. Okay. So the, how do they reduce their operating assets? I mean, if it was in an exam situation, I mean, every other thing doesn't sound correct. I probably would have gone for D, but thinking about it, what does it mean that it decreased their operating assets? It was, it's, it's kind of confusing. Okay. If your company is making, uh, let's say uh, $200,000, uh, your return on a million dollar. So the ROI would be uh, 20%, right? Um, so, one way you can increase the return is to reduce that one million, right? If you reduce it from one million to 800,000, so now 200 divided by 8,000, your ROI would be 25%. So when you reduce your operating asset from one million to 800,000, the profit of 200,000 will give you a, a ROI increased from 20% to 25%. Hmm, okay. And that's so, reducing their operating Yeah, assets. so you know, another way is how does ROI is calculated? Mm -hmm. ROI is calculated by a division. So mm -hmm. net income divided by asset, right? So mm -hmm. if you want to increase ROI, you can decrease the denominator. The operating asset. Okay, yeah. that makes sense. Yeah. Thank you. No problem. Okay, let's do this one. Did anyone see the answer? I, by accident, I showed the answer, I think. Um, okay, so work on this question. Uh, Kate? Um, I would say B. B, okay. Lemmy? B. Uh, Michaela? Oh, sorry, I am not finished okay. yet. I think I just yeah. had my hand raised from Kaysen? the last question. That's fine, yeah. Kaysen? Uh B. How did you get B? So I added up the variable costs and the fixed costs together. And then, so that's the cost. And then I did the target IOI or ROI, the, like the profit margin. And I did 2 million times 10%. Okay. Okay, so uh, what is your uh, total cost? My total cost was, um, I think it was 
It was 42 plus 1250, and then I took 400,000 and divided it by 50,000 units. And same with uh, 150, mm -hmm. and divided that by 4,000 units. Yeah, very good. So this is how I will do it, okay? You can have different ways to do it. It's totally fine. It's just the different ways to calculate it. So I want to calculate it first. The investment times 2 million times 10%, that's 200,000. So I'm going to add up all these numbers. Fixed cost, that's together, that's 55,000. Add up the $200,000. So that's 750,000 divided by 50,000 units. So I get $15 per unit. So these two together, that'll be 54.5 plus 15, that'll be 69.5, okay? So that answer is B, okay? The answer is B. Yeah. Are we okay with this question? Okay, good. Okay, so this is the chapter. We still have uh, 20 minutes, so that's good. So I'm going to cover this one because it's related to ABC. I will not test on these materials, okay? I will not test it in the midterm. I will not test it in the final exam, okay? This is just something good for you to know, okay? Um, so under the umbrella of the cost plus pricing, uh, you know, we have this variation time and the material pricing, okay? So you think about the professional corporations, right? As accountant, okay, I have my own practice. So, um, you know, what's the major cost, right? Materials and labor, that's the two major costs, right? The labor cost is probably the main component of the cost, okay? Uh, and so then, you know, how am I gonna, you know, set up the price? So this is give, give us some ideas. Uh, so you want to figure out the two rates. One is for the labor used on the job, okay? The other one is that, um, you know, the, the read, the materials are used, okay? So that's the, basically the two ideas, right? Okay, so mostly this approach is used for the professional firms, okay? So here's one example, okay? So I have all this uh, labor cost, right? The mechanics, uh, so that would be the person working directly on the car, right? Parts managers, right? Parts managers. Uh, so that's probably they're dealing with the materials, right? The parts and uh, office employees, okay? And you can see it's allocated between um, the time chart and the material overhead, total budget cost, okay? So, uh, so in this, in this uh, information, we are saying this is the budget number. We know the total hours, okay? The total hours is about 5,000 for the year, okay? Uh, so the first step, you want to de determine the charge for the labor time, okay? Uh, so the target, the labor rate based on 5,000 hours of repair time. So the mechanics are repairing the uh, vehicles. So the, the mechanics will budget to have 5,000 hours on that. And you are hoping to have a target profit margin of $8 per hour. So here is what happened, okay? Here is what happened. So for the labor cost, when this information are given, this is all the labor cost, including the mechanics uh, wage, they are, um, uh, there are uh, benefits, right? There are benefits and the overhead. So it turned out, turned out, uh, you know, it's 151,000. And we are all based on 5,000 um, mechanics hours, right? The labor hours. So then you figured out each, for each hour you are charging, the cost would be $30.20. But remember, for each hour, you want to make $8, right? So that you add $8. So that's how much you charge per hour, $38 and $20, 20 cents. Ashley? 
This looks very similar to like finding the rate for your manufacturing overhead. It yeah. looks like a very similar process. That's all you do then? Yeah, that's why I'm saying the reason why I want to talk about this because it's connected to the ABC in chapter five. Yeah, that, that's a fair, true uh, observation. Yeah, that's good. Uh, so now you know how to figure out what's the uh, rate charged per hour of, hour of labor, right? And also you want to calculate the materials loading charge, okay? So this would be uh, on top of the uh, materials price, okay? On top of the materials cost price. Not because people will incur laboring costs. They are purchasing, receiving, storaging these materials, right? You think about the people working for the parts um, uh, division for the uh, car dealership, right? They have to order these parts, right? And there may be shaping costs. They receive it and they put in the high hardware for storage, right? You see all these costs, right? So the cost is not just the amount of cost you cost you to order that parts, right? There are a lot of other handling costs, labor, right? Other um, overhead involved, right? So you, you want to also calculate all this, capture all this cost, right? So, uh, so basically uh, that this rate is expressed as a percentage of estimated annual, uh, annual parts and the materials cost, okay? So you know the cost pool that capturing all this cost Okay, and then I want to know what's the percentage. So estimate the purchasing, receiving, handling, storage and cost, okay, this, this component. And I will divide it for the total cost, okay? So that's at the percentage, okay? So I know that if my total cost is $100, I know that materials cost is $80, and the $20 will be the actual cost handling these materials, right? So then my percentage will be 20%, right? And then also wants to earn some profit, right? Let's say I want to earn 10%, right? Maybe on the, on the uh, total cost. If I total cost is $100, I want to make $10 on that. So that's my 10%. So when I add these two together, that's my second read. It's always a percentage, okay? So in this question, uh, you can see that this chart is, right? This is my cost. And my annual total cost is 120,000. So I figured out what's the, per, what's the percentage for this uh, materials loading charge. So 15.5, 12. So together, uh, this handling is 23.5%. And I want to make a 20% uh, profit. So together, um, so the, the additional, the cost charge, I will be 43.5%, okay? So I have these two numbers now. Okay, so now I want to figure out if there's a job, right? If there's a job cost me 50 hours, okay, 50 hours. And if the, the cost of the price is $3,600, right? How, how should I charge them? Well, 50 hours, each hour you charge them 38.2, right? So that's 1910, that's on the neighbor, on the labor, right? And then you order the part and materials that cost you 3,600. Okay, and you want to charge the loading charge, right? The actual charge on top of the materials cost um, in itself, right? So 43.5% on 3,600. So that's 15.66. So you work out the materials component 51.66 together 70.76, right? Does this make sense? <clears throat> You see how this connected to ABC, right? Yeah. So now you now it helps you to understand, right? How the uh, my car manufacturer, uh, if you go to have your car fixed, right? You know how what what their rationales in terms of you receive the bill, right? How they charge you. Sorry, was the material loading charge? That's just another markup, right? Um, materials loading charts, they're including the markup on the, so I will show you the previous slides. Sorry. 
Yeah, no problem. See, um, this this materials loading charge as a percentage, expressed as a percentage, have two components, right? One component is what you desire the profit margin on the materials, right? Uh, in that example, is twenty percent, uh, but also the materials. It's not like you just order the materials, right? You do nothing about it. There are additional costs, right, on the loading on that materials, right? Somebody has to order the materials and you pay that person's salary. Somebody has to receive the materials, move it to the warehouse, right? This is all the additional cost on top of the materials cost, right? We want to capture that cost in terms of percentage, right? So in this example, uh, we captured the total cost of on top of the other materials cost is 28, 200%. So I figured out that percentage is this divided by this 23.5%. And this 20% is my profit margin. So together I'm using 43.5%. Uh, gotcha. Okay. Thank you. Sorry yeah, about that. No problem. Yeah. This is all very good stuff, right? So, you know, while I'm running my own CPA practice, right? I had to think about this, right? How should I charge my client, right? Okay, so does anyone have any question? So I guess I can, and there are two theories, hypotheses for me to explain this silence, right? Uh, hypothesis one, you don't care, right? Because these materials will not be tested in the exams. So you don't care, you don't have questions. That's the hypothesis one. Hypothesis two is that I have done a fantastic job ex explaining everything very well, and you don't have questions. Is this hypothesis one or two? You can use the chat, give me a feedback. So the hypothesis one or two? Two means I did a good job. I explained everything well. One means you don't care, right? Because it's not tested. <laughs> it's not testable. <laughs> you guys are very kind to me. So it's all two, okay? <laughs> it's all two. <laughs> oh, okay. James said one, okay. I appreciate your honesty, James. <laughs> okay. Maybe, I understand, right? You have a long day. Maybe by the end of this lecture, your brain has shut down, right? You don't want to think about anything, right? Okay. But I'm still happy to see the majority is Two, right? Okay, so um, let's see. Oops, how come I don't have an uh, animation here? Boy, okay. So for this question, time and material pricing, including the following items. Um, the company sets two pricing rate, one for labor and another for materials, okay? So I have another question. So I'm gonna stop share. Okay, just give me one second. Uh, so what happened here? I need to I need to make sure I animate this one. Okay. Okay. So now I'm back. Share the screen. Okay. Now let's take a look at this question. This is our last question. And you have eight minutes to work on this one, okay? So I gave you eight minutes to work on this one. This is our last question.
Anyone have an answer? Uh, Tosin, what's your answer? Is it A? A, 33.25, 28.78%. Okay. Just wait for all other students. Thank you, Tosin. Anyone else? Ruben? I thought it was D, but I could be wrong. D, okay. So I have two answers right now. Anybody get a B or C? I ended up getting B. I wrote it in the chat. I totally forgot to say it though. <laughs> Oh, okay, let me take a look. Thank you. Sometimes I didn't, oh, B, okay. Anyone else? We just need one more student to tell me C that we are, we covered all the potential answers. Anyone wants to say C? Okay, C. <laughs> okay, Hussein is correct. <laughs> 
So the answer is C. Yeah, the answer is C. Um, so what happened here is, um, so the labor cost is the direct labor, salary, supervisor salary, and uh, these are the sales people's, sales people's salary, right? You add them up, okay? And this is your labor cost. That's the 315,000. And the 20% of that is the benefit. Okay, so that's the 63,000. Okay, so 315,000 three plus 63,000 plus 17,500. Okay, so that's all this together equals 395,500. And you divide it by 10,000, you get 39.55. Okay, so similar ideas for this side. Okay, for this side. Uh, 75, 40, 14, uh, 500, you add them up, okay, add this up, sorry, no, you, uh, 75, 40, you add these two up, that's your labor cost, and you times 22% to figure out, uh, to figure out the benefit, so then you add them up, that number, divided by 450,000, you should get 34.40%. Okay, Patricia? No, professor, thank you. Okay. I have a question about, about the, how to take the 34%, uh, 34.40, but uh, you answer now. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, so I think this answer are not technically correct. The reason for that is they didn't add this target profit margin, right? So the read has to include this target profit margin, right? So it should be really should be this number plus this 35 and this 40, 34.40 plus 15%, right? So, so the publisher, <laughs> yeah, I won't believe on publisher. <laughs> so my original answer was in the 70s and i thought i was doing something completely wrong so no I, no yeah no <laughs> you know sometimes you just have to trust your logic right yeah. you know you just have to trust well this is what i learned this is logic right so it, it could be the question could be wrong yeah so and i can be wrong right sometimes so occasionally right i won't say a lot of times um so yeah so th this this question is all from the publisher i think yeah the uh they screwed up on this question. So they should really add the 35 and the 15, yeah. Okay, my friend, it's time. The class is dismissed and we are having the uh, midterm second on Thursday. Good luck with your studying. Okay, make sure you study, okay? It's not, uh, you know, you probably find it's far easy. You may turn two, may turn one, right? So don't underestimate may turn two, okay? So I, I want to suggest you to start hard. Okay, and let me know if you have any question. Okay, and, uh, yeah, like we are going to, uh, you are just going to the same thing. You, you go to the uh, where Moodle website, take, the, take that uh, quiz, that's it. And there are two questions require you to submit an answer, right? You have, you have to upload the two files. Okay, one fell for each question. The one question is worth 60, the other question worth 20, and there are 10 multiple choice worth, worth 20, okay? Okay, well, good luck, okay, everyone? Okay, uh, I will see you after, boy, I will see you the, so in one week, I think, okay? So next week is the fall term, right? Fall break. So the week after Monday, uh, Tuesday, okay? So have, have a good time uh, in the fall break, take some rest, okay? And good luck with the exam. Thank Bye, you. Everyone. If you have a question, please stay, okay? Thank you. Yeah, bye. I just have a quick question, if that's okay. Yes. Um, 